we had a call with the Salesforce technical architect to discuss what has happened under this social hacking. All we know that that's related to connected apps. No doubt about that. But what he emphasized was is IP restrictions mainly, and also two-factor authentication and the way of using the Salesforce licenses in a best possible way. That was mainly what has happened there. Because imagine a user somehow trying to fraud your data and trying to be the one in the middle, maybe, in, in your integration. Or somehow one person with the connected app that they created, not forcing but deceiving your employee to get accepted and allow that connected app to, to access your org's data. It is what has happened, right? Someone somehow deceived a user, org user, uh, to allow a fake connected app to reach some data in the Salesforce org. It is called social hacking because human beings are deceivable, right? It is what has happened. But mainly he emphasized, emphasized that if uh, they had enabled this IP restriction, they wouldn't have had this problem happened. Why? Because imagine that those IP restrictions, you just put a restriction for the IPs. If they try to connect with a computer, not inside of this range, so simply it is just blocked. Therefore, I come up with a couple of right, you know, ideas here. The first one is, no IP restriction enabled for that company. That's why it happened. Because users could log in from any location, made it easier for attackers to exploit the access. The second one is integration users with standard profiles, standard Salesforce profiles. Imagine that a system admin profile is used as an integration profile. So imagine what could happen. Because in this Salesforce system admin profile, you have many, many strong permissions like modify all data, view, view all data, or like create and manage profiles, permission sets, uh, any login policies, security policies, sharing settings, and anything. So imagine that it can be somehow, you know, uh, taken by the attackers and any knowledge can be very, very sensitive and open for them for their use. The next one is definitely these profiles and permission sets and how you manage it uh, regarding these connected apps is another thing. And governance through these connected apps, definitely if you read any article, you see that like install button or block uh, or trusted connected apps, untrusted connected apps. We will, we will definitely, you know, can discuss this, but you can read it through the Salesforce documentation too, which is explained in a best way, right? But connect apps were not monitored, and you need to set up some monitoring system. Salesforce Security Center app is, I think, really best fit for this one because if you have even several different orgs, you can easily connect them into one UI and see them. Set some policies, and if something happens, just you can set set a, a notification to yourself to get a notification. You can observe the maybe. Uh, inactive users, active users, the users not logged in for last like three months and it is uh, visible there to you, um, which is very, I think, nice. You can just take a look at to that Salesforce application, but if you are lack of this monitoring, it could be a problem too. And the last one is just multi-factor authentication is obviously because using this username and password is not enough for that, right? To make it more clear for you, but there are also you know, some notes that I can share you with because this uninstalled app means basically, as it is explained, not explicitly installed by a system admin into the Salesforce org. So for those connected apps that your Salesforce admin installed into the system will not be impacted. But for the other ones, like just uh, authorize it by logging in, kind of, you know, granting access via the auth authorization page uh, would be impacted. And the existing authorization tokens taken for the users will not be impacted. So imagine that I have authorized to a 
Salesforce CLI, right, or any app, I will be using this app too. But if any new user try to access the same app, will be blocked simply. How to prepare for this change? Mainly if you go to connected app auth usage, you see several different connect apps. And there you see here, same, you know, a uh, couple of buttons there. If you see here, like the install button, you see that, okay, it is uninstalled, not installed, right? And you see the option to block it. Then you have some data here. Um, how many users use this connected app? You may see here one or 1,000, right? It depends on it is usage. So if you click on this one, you get more detailed overview, which is here the initial connection and the last used, then which gives you the idea, like imagine that it was five years ago and no one is using uh, right today. Then you can maybe block it today. Why? Why not? Because it's not in use anymore. And at that moment, how many times it is used by that user is also kind of, you know, counted here. Then with the revoke button, you may want this user to again take the refresh token, again take the token, right? By this either way, a multi-factor authentication or just self-authorizing. Salesforce recommends you to group all those connect apps under if they are trusted or untrusted. If they are trusted, don't hesitate to install them. After installing, you need to manage access to that connected app. Then, which is recommended here, under auth policies, permitted users should be admin approved users are pre-authorized. By that way, this, to be able to define these pre-authorized users, you need to define a, either a profile or permission set. If you pick this option, and not assigning any profile or permission set, then no one will use this connected app. Don't worry, because you will see a pop-up message, which is a very clear warning uh, for you to understand uh, what would be the consequences of clicking this option, right? But as a best practice for each connected app, you can go and create one permission set for that. And under this permission set, you can add a connected app specifically to that permission, then uh, you just check how many users, this user count, how many different users used this connected app. You can assign this permission set to that, connect, to that users. Then if you need to assign a new user, just you can go and assign this permission set to, to that user, which is as a, a best practice recommendation. Yeah, mainly, Currently, what I'm doing is this one. Just I have several different orgs, and I need to go through to each one and analyze them. Then I will be clicking, I think, a lot to this installer block uh, buttons. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it would be useful. You can share your experiences in in the comments section. Then I would also, you know, know what you have done for it. Uh, if I'm missing something, just you can also recommend it. And to support me, you can. Kind of, you know, like it and share it and put some comment. We, we would get to know each other. See you at the next video. Enjoy your day.